everyone, this is Richard from Electric Bike Report in the UK. Today we're going to be taking a look at this e-scoot Natuno. The e-scoop Natuno comes very well packaged with plenty of foam. The most time consuming part of unpacking is removing all of it. Be careful when undoing the cable ties which attach the front wheel to the frame not to puncture or scratch anything. Use the four allen key bolts to fix the handlebar into the stem and connect the display cable. Slot the front wheel into the forks and secure with the uh, skewer axle fixing then bolt the front light onto the front fork. Finally, bolt on the kickstand, attach the pedals, then you're ready to ride. This is an updated version of the e-scoop Voyager, which we reviewed back in 2021. Uh, like the Voyager, it's a trail electric bike. That's to say, it's not a full-on electric mountain bike, a full-on EMTB, um, to tackle absolutely any off-road conditions. Uh, rather, it's uh, just about getting you out and about there on the trails, uh, giving you value for money, plenty of bang for your buck. So what can you expect from the e-scoot Natuno? First of all, it's an EU spec bike, that's to say it will assist you up to 15 and a half miles an hour with the 250 watt rated Barfang rear hub motor. The price, as with other e-scoot bikes, is uh, aimed at the budget market. So this Natuno is currently discounted to 11.99 in the UK. The previous Voyager model was uh, 9.99 if I remember correctly. So although in these inflationary days it's gone up a couple of hundred pounds as you might expect, uh, there is uh, some upgrade within that price, namely this bigger battery, 522 watt hour battery. And also this new display here uh, a very large LCD display at the front. The LCD display itself is very nice and clear. Even on a sunny day like this, it's pretty visible. You just get three basic metrics, the power levels, one to five at the top, speed, and a battery bar at the bottom. It's also worth just concentrating, focusing a bit on the frame integrated battery with its 522 watt hour upgraded capacity. Uh, we'd just like to say how, how good and solidly made it feels. It locks into the frame well. We took it over quite a lot of rough bumpy ground. We never got any rattle or movement from it. Uh, there's a, a key lock on this side and it removes for charging as well. Uh, the brand of the battery itself is uh, Long Ting, which isn't a particularly well-known make. However, it does say on the battery it features 18650 size Samsung cells uh, and if you know your batteries you'll know that's a, a very reputable make of battery cell, standard size battery cell. As you would expect from Barfan, one of the biggest uh, hub motor manufacturers in the world, it's a dependable budget choice. We found it pretty effective up the, hill, up the hills, uh, overall a very solid reliable choice. The only disappointment we felt was the, uh, the power delivery itself, uh, possibly to do with the, uh, the cadence sensor down here, or the control electronics. It was just uh, a bit choppy, a bit late in delivering the power once you'd started pedalling and you got a few seconds run on after you'd finished. Uh, but overall it was a, a very solid performer of the hills uh, and we took it out with some fairly challenging gradients. The drivetrain is Shimano Tony 7-speed derailleur gears. They're really just about our favourite um, gear setup. It's a budget setup on a budget bike, obviously, but they're so easy to use and dependable and reliable. At the front you have a, a, a dial to show you 1 to 7 to indicate which gear you're in. To change down the gears, you just have a, a push button and to change up the gears a lever and the really good thing about this system is you can go through three or four gears at a time. As we normally say on uh, lots of budget bikes, uh, a bit of a wider 
gear range or just a lower gear range would be would be nicer especially on case sensing models like this where you uh, want to keep the, the pedals moving under all conditions at the front we have zoom budget suspension forks here they were pretty effective uh, really took the edge off all the rocky tracks towpaths uh, and bumpy roads we went up so given the price they're about what you would expect and about up to spec it's a fairly soft spring in the forks uh, but I felt it was about right for my weight I'm 154 pounds 70 kilograms or so but there's more detail on how the pop fork performed in the handling section we've also got cable operated disc brakes on 160 millimeter rotors uh, these were another standout feature like the gearing plenty of braking power even though they're a, a budget uh, spec more than enough power to stop under just about any conditions some of the best cable operated brakes we've found being a trail bike you've got knobbly tires these are Kenda knobblies 27 and a half inch uh, by 2.1 inches wide these were really good uh, on and off-road pretty fast on the tarmac but also loads of grip uh, in all sorts of muddy and slippy grassy conditions again more on the performance of those in the handling but uh, overall a, another sound choice and we were very impressed with them last but not least you've got front and rear lights your front are hardwired very powerful front light more than adequate for unlit conditions we were uh, going night riding with it and through uh, very long canal tunnels uh, so there's plenty of illumination to see what's in front of you uh, to make it very safe for unlit conditions you've also got a, a battery powered LED at the rear uh, which was uh, a pretty standard budget choice LED and perfectly sound and capable choice Lastly, you've got a fairly solid kickstand on this side. Uh, that rounds off the main features, so we'll just take a, a, a look in more detail at how the bike performed in testing. The Natuno uses Zoom mechanical disc brakes with 160mm rotors. Our brake test confirmed their effectiveness in terms of power, with an average stopping distance from 20 mile an hour of just 11 foot 6 that's 3.5 meters and that's an impressive result in short the zoom mechanical disc brakes provide very powerful and effective braking it was reasonably graduated as you can see they easily let me descend this 15 percent gradient under control though if you squeeze the levers very hard and quickly they provide tons of immediate stopping power Over our standard hilly off-road course, featuring plenty of tracks, trails and canal towpaths, the Natuno returned a range of around 37 miles for a 70 kilogram, 154 pound or so rider on a very warm summer's day, ascending some 3,954 feet in the process. At around 14 watt hours a mile, that's pretty efficient. It does mean if you take a little care in selecting your power levels and don't use too much power, you can easily mount a rack and mudguards to the Natuno and use it as an effective touring bike for riding around most of the day, taking it easy and just drinking in the views. Fittingly, it's pretty easy to pedal without power on the flat too. The EBR UK test circuit is a 1.25 mile loop with a small hill, four turns and a couple of narrow sections where slowing is required. A test rider does a lap at each pedal assist level, starting with the motor off. The Natuno's level 1 and 2 weren't a huge improvement to riding with no power at all, as they only assist up to very low speeds. It's the top three power levels where the motor really kicks in and is of most use, and you get a, a marked improvement in lap time. Our only suggested improvement would be to have a rider customizable power profiles or even the ability to uh, reduce the number of power levels altogether as the lower levels are, are quite close and are, are only of limited use anyway. Overall the handling of the Natuno was stable and reassuring especially when you needed it on descents and rounding unexpected obstacles. The bike's elongated stem 
gave a leant forward, sporty ride position which was fairly well balanced on the bike but also allowed you to look up and take in your surroundings. The zoom budget steel sprung fork performed pretty much in line with expectations on all the rocky and unsealed tracks we took the Nituna on. The spring was set quite soft which suited the main test rider who weighs around 154 pounds or 70 kilos. There was a bit of bounce if the front wheel took off and landed strongly, that's down to a lack of damping, but in general the forks helped smooth out the moderately challenging off-road tracks and urban humps and bumps the Nituno encountered. Our only quibble was the seemingly ineffective compression adjustment. The Nituno uses Kenda 27.5 by 2.1 inch knobbly tyres. These felt fast and stable on road and their excellent traction very likely helped the Nituno get the impressive braking test result it did. Their off-road performance was equally impressive with plenty of traction on grass and on mud. The new design of central display is integrated into the handlebar mount and gives a very clear colour LCD readout even in bright sunlight. There's just three elements on the display, speed readout, battery capacity in the form of a barred battery icon and power level. If you want more info there is an app which provides a few extra metrics but we didn't feel that element in its Android form was worth using because it was clearly under development. There are two buttons on the display itself, on off and power mode which selects one of the five power levels. The power level button only lets you go up a level meaning if you want to go down from 5 to 4 you have to scroll all the way through off, 1, 2 and 3. This arrangement is a little fiddly and a separate thumb control linked to the display would have been an excellent addition. A short push on the power button turns the front light on and off. There's also a USB charge port at the bottom of the display which delivers around half an amp of power. We found that was just enough to stop a phone from running down rather than actively charging it up. By the right hand grip you have the ubiquitous Shimano SIS button and lever control to control the seven derailleur gears. This never missed a change and even allows you to change through several gears at a time very quickly and just as effectively as many more expensive derailleur setups. All UK e-bikes are tested over several runs on a 0.8 mile long constant road climb for our hill climb with plenty of 5% gradient and the Natuno's time of 3 minutes 10 seconds was a few seconds off the pace of the more powerful mid drives. It was more on the par with some of the smaller sized hub motor e-bikes we've tried. Despite being a bit slower than average, climbing always felt pretty easy and the test rider never really had to put in a very large degree of effort. It was the motor that felt to be doing most of the work. The power just ke keeps coming as long as you can keep the pedals turning smoothly without too many stop starts. On our ultra steep hill climb with a 15% plus gradient in the middle the Natuno made it all the way up at about 5 mile an hour on the steepest sections with the rider pulling moderately hard on the bars. All in all the spec of the Natuno is just what you would expect to see at this kind of price point. Having said that, we feel the large 522 watt hour battery is a real bonus as it's bigger than you get on many bikes at this price of just over a thousand pounds. The only area we felt was a, a potential weakness was that rather choppy power delivery. Uh, some bikes around the same price point will definitely have a smoother power delivery, although they're not likely to have that large battery. The cheapest mid drives on the UK market are going to be a few hundred pounds more than the 1199 e-scooter asking for the Natuno. So really other competitors are going to be um, hub motor models. One area where we think it really does win out is that the big battery gives it potential to become a longer distance tourer or a long distance commuter. You have attachment points at the back of the frame for a full length mudguard and for a rack. So you could easily add those and uh, you'd probably get pretty much a full day's riding out of the battery if you were just a bit careful with the power levels. Note that eScoot are a direct to consumer brand. They're offered in the UK and in the EU. Uh, but we also see that there's also now a .com US website. Though the bikes on there also appear to be EU spec and limited to 15 and a half miles an hour assist. Check out the spec sheet on the full written report, there's a link below to that. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hope to see you next time.